another African leader toppled by the army. Whose turn will it be next? The fall of Gabon's leader, Ali Bongo, has rattled the continent's autocrats and Democrats alike. Cameroon and Rwanda both made hurried changes to their top military within hours of the coup in Libreville. And they have good reason to be nervous. Since World War II, 45 of the continent's 54 countries have suffered attempted coups and military takeovers are on the rise again now. I'll be asking an expert what's driving this coup contagion. But first, here's a look at events in Gabon. Jubilant scenes on the streets of the Gabonese capital. After nearly 56 years of Bongo family rule, the political dynasty was overthrown by its own presidential Republican guard. And after so much time, many are excited at the prospect of change. We've had enough of the PDG party. They've ruled us for decades, even if they never won any elections. Hours later, the army named General Brice Olegiungima, a cousin of Bongo's, as the new transitional president. If the coup is successful, this will be the sixth African country where the military has seized power since 2020. Ousted President Ali Bongo Ondimba had claimed victory in last weekend's elections, but mere minutes after his win was announced, senior military officers annulled the results and staged the putsch. Now, under house arrest, Bongo released a message asking the world for help. I'm Ali Bongo Ondimba, President of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise, for the people here have arrested me. Many in Gabon are hoping the change in leadership will bring a brighter future. And for now, the international community can only watch on with bated breath. The coup in Gabon is just the latest in a string of recent military takeovers on the African continent. Five other countries in the region have also seen coups, most recently in Niger last month. In 2022, Burkina Faso saw two putsches in less than nine months. And in 2021, Sudan's Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok was ousted by military force. The same year, Guinea and Mali experienced their own coup d'etat. And for more on this, my first guest today is John Chin at the Carnegie Mellon Institute for Security and Technology. Welcome to DW News Africa. Um, you've published fascinating research into all coups worldwide going back to 1945. And Africa, as you've observed, is the global epicenter of coups. Don't you want to just start by telling us more about your main findings, Professor? Yeah, well, the first thing, uh, important finding is that not all coups are the same. So when we talk about there being a resurgence of coups in Africa, there's actually been multiple resurgences because uh, we can distinguish between, on the one hand, for example, regime change coups that seek to, say, overthrow democratically elected government, as recently happened in Niger, or leader reshuffling coups that, in fact, are trying to preserve uh, the incumbent regime, like we saw in Chad just a few years ago, to try to uh, have the Debbie regime continue in power. So there is a lot of variety of coups, and that actually makes it particularly difficult to gain traction to say in general about uh, what are the causes, uh, for example, of the recent coup wave in Africa. Uh, but that uh, is, in fact, what we, we try to do. Right. And as you've highlighted in your in your research, there were frequent coups in Africa during the Cold War era. Why was it so? Well, there are lots of reasons uh, that go to structural factors, including uh, uh, problems of uh, democratic development following independence, poverty, low levels of education, weak uh, democratic civil societies, as well as uh, particularly nettlesome ethnic politics in many countries, so that in effect, the state became a prize for many different uh, 
ethnic groups and ambitious individuals in Africa, as well as other regions during uh, the Cold War that, that made uh, coups a particularly attractive option uh, to try to seize power as well as rents. But then in the two years uh, from 2020 to, to 2022, there were 11 coup attempt, attempts. Now add to uh, Niger and Gabon. That takes us to 13. What would you say has sparked this resurgence of coups, I think, as you called it? Well, the first thing we looked at was, did it have something to do with the global COVID pandemic? Because the wave really started to take off around 2020 at the same time as the pandemic. And it turns out uh, we didn't really find much, if any, evidence of that. In fact, um, it's some of the more traditional suspects uh, that we think uh, are most closely associated with the resurgence. So again, poverty, uh, dilemmas of democratic uh, development. Of course, in the various cases in West Africa, which have been the majority of cases, prominent Isla uh, Islamist insurgencies have also played an important role. And how much of a role have outside influences played? France and Russia, uh, the role that they are playing in, in some of these countries. Um, do they have a part to play or is it solely local factors? Well, outside actors have a role to play. I don't think they really had much of a causal role sort of triggering the recent uh, coup resurgence. Um, there have been, you know, reports that of the Wagner Group, you know, being an important actor in some of these countries. Of course, France and the United States have also been active with uh, military training and so on to oppose the Islamist insurgencies across the Sahel. But I don't think um, it's any of... Uh, of the outside actors who are quote unquote to blame. I do think that um, it is largely uh, local uh, and regional dynamics um, that are at play here. So Professor, of the now 13 coups that we have seen in Africa since 2020, um, many of them have had public support. I'll point to Niger and to a large extent Gabon. Um, I just wondered of the ones that we've had before these two, what results have these military takeovers had? Have they delivered on their promise? Uh, well, not all of them made the same uh, promises. Um, but for those that did promise a quick return to elected constitutional democratic rule, those promises have largely gone unfulfilled. And although a number of uh, military juntas in the region have made promises under pressure, threat of sanctions, or actually imposed sanctions from ECOWAS, the United States, France, and others, um, you know, once sanctions are lifted, promises are often uh, revoked. And so we haven't really seen a successful return to democracy in any of these countries. Professor, you say that the response uh, by the international community to a coup makes a difference. Tell us more about the response to coups uh, in Africa and how that's impacted military juntas. Well, uh, of course, uh, coup plotters have to be strategic if they want to uh, seize and keep power. And so one important factor in the calculus of a coup plotter is to gauge what they think the international reaction will be. Of course, if uh, the hammer of sanctions comes down, it makes it very difficult to stay in power. And so the uh, idea of trying to launch a coup in the first place is reduced. So uh, active diplomacy by the international community to uh, either reverse coups, which is very difficult, but uh, more likely in, in all of these cases to try to shorten the duration of post-coup regimes uh, is can play an important role. That kind of active diplomacy uh, was much rarer during the Cold War, which of course made Africa a more permissive environment for coups in that period. In the post-Cold War period, uh, anti-coup norms uh, developed, especially uh, in regional international organizations uh, such as the African Union and ECOWAS, as well as with other uh, foreign aid donors. And so continuing to uphold anti-coup norms, I think, is really important uh, to ensure that uh, hopefully we can see the resurgence of coups come to an end and uh, continue democratic development in the region. 
Um, this uptick uh, in coups that started in 2020, are we likely to see that continue? And, and could you talk us through what you mean by the phrase coup contagion? Unfortunately, I do think that we're going to continue to see coup activity in Africa. Scholars of coups, when we talk about coup contagion, we are really thinking of coups almost like a virus, how they might spread um, from one patient uh, to another or victim to another. And the question is, is, uh, is coup activity in one country influencing or making coup activity in another country more likely? And it's actually very difficult to say whether how the extent to which that is the case in the recent coup wave. There is circumstantial evidence of coup contagion. We know, for example, that there um, some of the coup plotters have trained uh, together uh, at, uh, in Paris, for example, and so that there are some personal connections between uh, some of some of the coup leaders. But there's definitely no smoking gun evidence, and so it, you know, in the absence of that. Uh, one might have to assume that local uh, domestic factors will still uh, be, right. be the dominant one in coup activity moving forward. You say, Professor, that countries with recent coups are at risk of falling into the coup trap. Is it possible to assess the criteria and say which country might be vulnerable in the future? It is very difficult. I'm working with some scholars uh, in the statistics and machine uh, learning department here at CMU to try to develop Colpus Cast, a new forecasting model, to do exactly what you're asking. Unfortunately, it's still a little premature. Uh, we're not quite ready uh, to launch. However, uh, having said that, uh, it it is logical to assume that countries that look like uh, those that have had coups recently uh, in terms of structural factors should be those uh, that are most at risk. My brilliant colleague, Hallie Bartos, uh, for example, thinks that Paul Bia in Cameroon uh, should be quite worried. Uh, like uh, Ali Bongo and his father, uh, he's a longtime dictator uh, and a country that's quite dependent on France. And um, you can imagine that uh, uh, he'll, he'll be taking steps to try to secure his rule uh, moving forward. Yeah. And you mentioned Gabon there. Did you see this one coming? Uh, I did not. Uh, and But that's the thing about coups. Uh, uh, to be successful, you you don't see them coming uh, very, very easily. Uh, so the fact that uh, coups in the region would happen, yes, uh, quite likely that this particular coup would strike Gabon uh, and be led by the head of the Republican Guard, uh, in the wake of the recent election. Uh, no, I actually didn't see that coming. Well, f fascinating stuff, Professor. We appreciate your time here on DW News Africa. That's John Chin at the Carnegie Mellon Institute for Security and Technology. Thank you.